we've talked about the importance of you know fitness and health and aging gracefully and things like that and and it's true that like a lot of our identity gets built around that you've had a battle with cancer and i'm curious what that was like and how it changed your perspective especially being this like you know you're tall dark and handsome you're jacked you're athletic you're strong you're in the gym you're around all these healthy people i think a lot of what we do uh, the reason we do what we do is to try and minimize all of those. And all of a sudden you you have this, you know, crazy, scary battle. What was, what was that like for you? What was that time frame like? And what did you go through? Yeah, it's funny. So um, <clears throat> I, in my mind, I've, I've minimized the cancer thing because my, my battle with cancer was very quick and very easy in retrospect. Um, but it didn't make it any less scary. So in 2011, my daughter was born. And soon thereafter, um, the details are really quick. I, I uh, basically felt something. So it was a test to clear cancer. And I was like, man, that ain't right. And I went to a doctor. At the time, uh, I had just gotten health insurance. So think about that. Like I was I was just recently covered by health insurance. Otherwise, it would have been an even bigger disaster. But uh, effectively, this guy turned me away. He's like, no, nah, you're good. That's, that's natural. Hmm. Within two weeks, I was curled over in pain. Something was clearly wrong. Like felt like I felt like I got kicked in the nuts. And uh, went to went to a local friend who was a urologist, and luckily, like this guy was literally in Greg Glassman's first gym, so he was OG CrossFit um, and uh, and a close friend. And he was like, "Look, dude, I, I'm not even going to check you out. Like, you've got cancer. Like, I'm going to send you over for a, a, a ultrasound." And so from there, again, like I'll, I'll fast forward because the bottom line is it was like aggressively growing uh, surgery the next day no hospital stay and back home. Wow. Uh, and from there, I guess, I, and I, I mentioned that because like, w- what's cool is if you get testicular cancer, you've like, you've won the lottery in cancer because it's the easiest one to cure, right? If you, if you go at it early, catch it and detect it, it's usually not a big issue. Um, but I, the, the mental torment was still there. Like when mm-hmm. somebody says those words to you, right? Like you've heard, you, we all, every single person probably listening to this knows somebody or was close is close with somebody who has been yeah. diagnosed with cancer or has a loved one at least who, yeah. who um you know has had their brush with cancer and so the terror was real and we were lucky for the fact that um so again i had a my son is about 20 months older than my daughter and so we'd had our second child um but now got testicular testicular testicle removed and you've got this path in the woods luckily i didn't have to do chemo it was just uh observation but for the next six years, it was, you know, kind of kind of looking over your shoulder, taking blood tests, doing mm. scans. Um, and luckily, it all came out for the better. The The bigger issue was in my post-operative scans, they were like, hey, man, you've got good news, bad news. Good news is the cancer's gone. The bad news is you've got this really crazy thing in your lung. And my urologist was like, look, I probably heard about it one time in med school, but I'm not the guy. So you got to go to a specialist. Um I ended up at Stanford and it was effectively, I had non, it wasn't cancerous. I had non-functioning lung tissue in the bottom third of my right lung. Hmm. And so the, the real dangerous thing was that there was a blood flow coming from my descending aorta. Um, and, uh, so uh, the end of the story is that with a infant daughter at home, I had to go to Stanford, get a 10 hour surgery by which they like unattached my lat, opened me up in between my ribs and took out a third of my right lung. Damn. Um, yeah, dude. Yeah. And this was, that one was almost more heady than the cancer in a lot of ways because there was an open heart component to it. Um, like I, I, this, I literally made a video for my kids, you know, where it was like, wow. yeah, you know, in case I don't make it, here's the, here's the things that I'd love for you to know. And, um, so yeah, that's the, that's the issue in a, in a nutshell. I think the outcome for me has been multifold. One is that, you know, I've got this, I was given a platform and I was lucky for, for a lot of years, especially at CrossFit, um, when I was a spokesperson and I had an elevated, you know, uh, media presence where I could billboard that as much as possible. And, and uh, it wasn't that I could raise tens of thousands of dollars or, you know, reach the most people, but there was a lot, a lot, a lot, like dozens, if not hundreds of people who I got to have a personal connection with where I can't tell you how many DMS that I get on a consistent basis. Anytime that I post something about testicular cancer from, uh, patients themselves of all types of cancer, guys who are going through testicular cancer, who, you know, it could be, it can be an ego hit in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. like take the cancer out of the situations, you know, it's a dude's manhood. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's all sorts of issues there or loved ones of people. So I've been able to have, um, I, I love in the same way that coaching in the gym for me, one-on-one with a client 
is more meaningful. Like I've always valued the opportunity to talk about CrossFit on a higher platform because you you reach a lot more people. Uh, but those personal interactions that came from that have been um, worth their weight in gold, you know, feeling like I could be of service, even if it's just to say, here's how I did it, or they see, hey, look, you look pretty healthy now. Um, so there could be silver lining. A lot of times you get a diagnosis like that and you're like, shit, life's over, man. Um, you know, I think it's a, even if it's not an actual death sentence, they think it's a death sentence for any kind of like a meaningful life afterwards. So uh, I do my best to just try and try and lead with that and, and you know, be pretty forward about it. That's an extremely power, powerful perspective. Would you say that doing hard things willingly prepared you for when the hard things that you didn't choose found you in life? thousand percent. Um, it's always been kind of a, like, I think I already said this, but like, like when I found CrossFit training in the community that was attached to it, I was like, this is it. Like, it just made sense. And these are my people. <clears throat> and I've done plenty of, of intentional hard things outside the gym as well, but by, you know, like if we're showing up at 5 a.m. on a daily basis, none of this stuff is easy. And uh, yeah, I think that you're, that you're intentionally dosing yourself with adversity on a consistent basis. And absolutely, not only physically was I better prepared and I've got, you know, plenty of friends who have stories as well of car crashes where the, you know, the doctors are like, look, most people's neck snap in this situation when you get T-boned from the side, but your, your physical capacity literally made you stronger. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, going into surgery is like a, a well-oiled, well-hydrated, um, healthy human is, is a lot better. But yeah, the mental side of it, to your point, is, you know, I'll I'll die on that hill. Like people may think that it's cheesier, that it sounds um, fabricated or a little blown out of proportion, but it's true. I mean, if I, the, the other option for me would be to sleep longer and to, to not hit the gym. And um, it's a, you mentioned that like in the, in the, especially current age, like if you're not doing hard things or at least, you know, using your body in a productive way, it's pretty easy to get very soft. And when these kind of things come up, um, it can bury you. It really can, man. I love this um, a little quote or, or mantra or whatever, but it easy choices, hard life, hard choices, easier life. Not an easy life, but the harder choices create the easier life because we're all going to get served that curveball. We're, we're all going to have to eat a couple of shit sandwiches. If you have yep. developed some kind of fortitude, temperance, discipline to willingly face some of these things on the day to day when the big macro stuff finds you, it, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but you have some tools, you have some strategies, you can you can kind of find an extra gear that maybe you otherwise wouldn't be able to. And in that situation, you could have been like that other person that takes that identity of the person with the capital C cancer and that's it you know that, that, that that's it for me yep. it's all over or you never get back in the gym or now you're just in that deteriorating path so I think it's really powerful for people to hear that and like you said the the conversations that have started after that because of you being able to tell your story is really important because I think when we hear and see other people bounce back from something hard it gives us permission to say like they are actually a lot like me as much as other people are different. You know, not everybody's a Rory, not everybody's a rich, but like if they can do it, why can't I do it? Or why can't I borrow a little bit of their belief and do it too? And I think that's what's really empowering and inspiring about these stories and being around other people that instill that belief in you.